the nutritious and cultural rich land of Angkor, the livelihood of the local villagers is still pretty much being preserved. One could witness, feel, and somehow comprehend what the atmosphere could have looked like one or two hundred years ago. Wooden countryside houses surrounded by tangling, fast-growing trees scattered along the rice paddies, soaking wet by the heavy tropical rain and the absence of the scorching sun. Herds of water buffaloes bathe in the floodplains as they enjoy the small vegetation for their afternoon snack. Muddy red soil binds to the tires like glue, which is almost impossible for small cars to get through. Once in a while, small temples and tiny ancient shrines appear behind a wall of thickly grown trees. Hidden from sight and undisturbed by the population, as one travels deeper into the village, groups of houses unite to form small communities with medium-sized pagodas and small-sized schools nearby. As lunch is served and the sky is cloaked with increasingly darker clouds, the cooler wind woos some villagers to take a small nap on their bamboo beds or hammock. If not, apart from traveling to their rice paddies and conducting agricultural activities, some locals also implement craftsmanship as a way to bring more earnings. Their commitment and creativity brought additional income to their families as they transform raw materials surrounding their living space into something practical and useful for daily living. In the village of Don Kaev, Bu district, Simri province, Momlain is one of the hustling women who crafts raw materials into products. Specifically, this elderly lady traditionally makes use of palm tree sheath, which is an abundant natural resource around her village. In her free time and a few processes later, the palm tree sheath can be braided into hand-sized household rooms in which she often sells it at the local market. After a satisfying lunch, when some of her family members already went to take a short nap, the elderly lady did not rest right away. Instead, Mom Lain is sitting next to a pile of dried palm tree sheet inside the comfort of her wooden and bamboo huts as her hands quickly tie them into specific patterns before it can become a properly functioning broom. Well known for their versatility, and inexpensiveness, what most people do not know is that these brooms are also incredibly time-consuming to make. While Mom Lain is sitting inside and braiding the broom, outside is her daughter-in-law, hammering the sheet vigorously, breaking them into strings pieces. Originally, the fiber-like sheet actually comes in larger and heavy block pieces. The raw material has to be extensively wetted, broken down using hammers and manual force, sun-dried and separated into a more confined fibers before they can be braided into brooms. So why does the sheet have to be wetted for quite some time underground? Hammering them directly after they are freshly cut can cause the material to shatter since they are quite crispy. Therefore, Momline's daughter-in-law has to first bury the sheet slightly underground and generously apply water in order to soften them. The thicker sheet would need around 45 days for them to be ready, while thinner ones would only need 15 days. Once it is softened or drenched enough, the sheet will be hammered and pieces of fibers will appear after a few sets of hits. More importantly, the main hammer in use must be made of softer materials like wood. Metal hammer is included as well but only for the first few hits so that the harder outside layers can be broken down much easier. Without the softer wooden hammer, constant metal hammering would be too strong for the sheet and it will break apart the fiber making them impractical for braiding. Later on, after the sheets are beaten, they must be fully dried in the sun for two days. Then, they will be submerged in water again before combing thoroughly with an iron comb made from nails. 
In the final stage, we will see dried individual and string-like materials that will be delivered to Moonlight as she prepares to twist them into brooms. Naturally, the fibers will not be of equal length. Some might be smaller or longer than others. Hence, the shorter one will be braided into brushes, while the longer ones will be used to secure the braiding to the wooden handle. After the materials are all ready, Momlan continued by braiding the dried fibers. She attached the broomstick, which is about 30 centimeters in length, to a wooden stabilizer that arrives at a comfortable height in front of Momlan. She then starts crisscrossing the fiber one on top of the other on the bottom, creating a secure pattern as she continues finishing it. On average, it would take less than a week to make a hundred brooms, but if you have fewer people working, it might take up to a week or so to achieve that number. Moreover, with 100 brooms, Momline will earn 100,000 reals or approximately 25 US dollars. Although this amount of money is unable to meet her family daily needs, it definitely is helpful for smaller expenses around the house. Despite the small fee, Momline expresses her happiness in her work. She would like to continue braiding brooms because it is neither demanding nor extremely tiring compared to farming or raising animals. Instead, it is a perfect side hustle to keep her busy during the day and provide extra cash along the way as well. It is true that the price is quite unfair considering the effort to braid and the time to prepare the raw materials. ຈັ່ງຈຳລອງບ້ານຫນັງບ້ານໄດ້ຈຸນຫນຶ່ງຈາປີເລຍຢູ່ຈະໃຫ້ຈ້ອຍຈຸນຈຸນໄຫນການລ
The small business did not help them much, as the fee is quite limited and the effort is high. But it is enough to get by with tiny expenses around the house, and it is a better option to fill in the void of time. Based on the status quo, the traditional brooms are popular already, but it could have been more widely used. These brooms, although they look simple and modest, they are super durable. One could last up to months if used properly. But the important part is that they are organic and biodegradable. After the strings are shredded apart and no longer can be used, it can be returned to the dirt and soil, and none that is harmful to the environment. There is no microplastic particles, which can get into the food chain. Potentially, these brooms are big help to the environment and sustainable living, as well as promoting the livelihood of local traditional craftsmanship. Supporting the palm tree sheath brooms is both helping the environment to be greener, and the smaller businesses like Moonline and her daughter-in-law. To continue making these traditional brooms.